I know. I chose this one specifically. <laughs> just, just for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're caught in the trap. Can't go back. Um, but I told a story. So, Patty, what were the discussions about in the breakout? Anything new come up? Um, well, retention was definitely a topic of, of uh, most interest and concern. And what are some of the things that you can do that are kind of easy and low cost to work on retaining people? And the biggest thing is to be in a dialogue with your people. And if you're in a dialogue, you're going to know what's going on. You're going to know what the issues are, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing was um, kind of the overworking factor. So at agencies, <laughs> so under resourced um, pieces of business and people being overworked if there's open roles and mm -hmm. you know, how do you manage that? That was another topic. And then it, that's interesting because I, I was listening to this uh, free economics podcast recently um, and they were talking about how behavioral economics are going into different areas. And one of them was around um, retention. Call centers mm -hmm. actually have much higher you think agency turnover is bad, yeah. call centers are like 75% turnover every year. And so they tried to, to use behavioral economics in order to um, figure out the retention. And they found that compensation raises do not work at all. Mm -hmm. It basically gives you like a month of loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, again, it comes back to uh, feeling like they're doing something important and, um, and then their manager. Yeah, well, in those environments, most of the time, the, the people don't understand the impact that their work might be having on a customer or client. And when that's not explained, then the mm -hmm. routine of it every day just gets. Um, so how do you, uh, anything come up about how you make sure that agencies don't become like call centers? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. I, I always say to people, you don't have to like invest millions to retain people, right? Um, and if you're, if you're a team leader, making sure that your team understands kind of what your purpose is in whatever area you're in and how that connects to kind of the, the bigger vision that the, the um, organization is heading towards. It gives people a sense of, okay, what I'm doing every day, even if I may be tired because it's not as resource, I know the impact it's making, so I feel like I'm adding value. And I think if you can connect people to that, it helps a little bit. Um, obviously, um, you know, there's other um, flexible things you can do to, if people are working tremendous hours and feeling burnt out and questioning, um, you know, whether they want to keep doing it, there's lots of tools you can use to, you know, create flexible work arrangements to give people the ability to, um, you know, flex their time. Maybe they can, you know, come in later two days a week and it enables them time then, you know, with family at home. So I think there's so many things in a leader's control, but if you're not actually in touch with how the employees feel, sometimes you miss the opportunity to actually solve some of the problems. Interesting. I want to I revisit that. But um, Adam, what were, what were some things that uh, rose out of, there's a large group over there. There's a large group. There was, there was alcohol involved, There was apparently. a lot of alcohol. <laughs> we a lot of booze. Why not pick up where we left off last night on Bourbon Street? There were beads. Um, <laughs> actually, I took notes because okay. there, was, there was a lot of interesting dialogue and no one could kind of hear each other. So now that I have a microphone, um, there were five themes uh, that kind of emerged talking about how you adapt for programmatic, more from the agency standpoint, but I, I think from all sides, right? And this is affecting everyone in this room. Um, the first was, you got to bring it closer to the actual work. You can't silo this stuff and make it a sort of uber specialty that sits off in their own, um, you know, sort of in their own part of the office or just like in their own place, like once or twice or three times removed. Um, that's not helping. You got to you got to bring this stuff together and look at it holistically. Um, we talked about building teams and how you sort of codify uh, this knowledge and, and these skills and how you do it kind of from the inside out. Um, and that might be hiring outside experts to to grow things organically. Um, it might be through just in-depth uh, training uh, and repurposing existing resources. Um, training was a big theme, education was a big theme, and the sort of constant need for that, because there is no textbook written on this stuff. Anyone who claims to be an expert is full of shit, right? It's happening now, so how do you constantly stay at the edge? You have to immerse yourself in new platforms, 
on both sides. You have to make sure you're speaking uh, the right language and you're doing that consistently. Um, and in order to do that right and make sure it applies to different clients, whether you're in a B2B, you're in uh, CPG, you're, you're in finance, you have to start thinking about the scenarios of how this uh, new world will impact the current one that you're living in. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you take um, you know, private marketplaces and DSPs and automated guaranteed and how do you apply that in real world scenarios so you understand how it's gonna impact what you do, you understand what the value should be and how you should be uh, uh, calculating that um, to understand the impact. But above all, there's a, a really great need for further simplification uh, and, and there's just a huge opportunity to demystify all this stuff because it shouldn't be so complex that people have trouble pitching it um, from platform to platform or differentiating between one another or that people on the other side have a challenge evaluating it and really understanding what it is that they're trying to look at or how it's supposed to fit into their world. Okay. Uh, my own native ad for that is we do have a WTF programmatic uh, yes, series that we do. Um, but it's interesting that there is, um, there's a lot of overlap, I think, mm -hmm. it sounds like, from, because um, you're talking about the need for, Adam, you're talking about the need for education and the need for training. Um, and then you, that you sort of alluded to that, too. But then there's this sort of trap, to go back to this um, Fine Young Cannibal song that we came on to, in that um, why invest in the training if you're going to lose, you know, four out of ten people every year? Well, you're still going to keep 60% of them. Yeah, and I think if you're investing in the train, those stats sometimes change because people actually feel the commitment that mm -hmm. the, the agency is making to them. So I think it's, is it the right training? I think you have to, yeah. you know, pick your spots and make sure you're dealing with the, mm -hmm. the skill differences that, you know, are happening. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of data out there that, um, you know, I think it's like 50% of the jobs that exist today aren't going to exist. 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And technology is the main kind of impetus to that. So, but do, do agencies have the resources to truly invest in um, the amount of, of training that they, that they need to? I mean, because you have to live in the sort of real world of, of, of client demands and them crunching down agencies. So yeah, how do you actually I mean, invest? I in? think um, most don't. Um, it's not... Um, a line item that, um, you know, especially if you have a, a complex, um, diverse organization, it's not a line item that every agency is going to have. Um, I think one of the things that we've tried to do is, as we do talent assessment, is to look for where there are, you know, certain themes coming up and then put the money towards those because you mm -hmm. can impact more people rather than kind of doing the onesie, twosie things. Um, the other thing is a lot of times you have resources within your agency that can play a role in training. They may have a particular skill set that then can be um, shared and transferred across your uh, population. So understanding who those experts are and figuring out a way to leverage them, it's actually a good kind of spirit thing for the, yep. the whole agency. Did anyone in, in, um, in the breakout bring up any sort of innovative ways to approach training within their agencies? Um, we didn't talk about training specifically. I shared one example. Um, I, you know, I kept hearing from all of our global leaders, we need to do more around mobility, we need to move people around the network, you know, let's get people going to live in other countries and everything. And, you know, um, that's all well and good, and you can kind of do that selectively, but the reality of it is it takes an amazing amount of resources yeah. between visas and, um, you know, just how you're going to rationalize their salaries in a different market. And it's a very time-consuming um, process that impacts one individual. So we kind of turned the whole thing on its head, and we basically said we want a lot of people to have a mobility experience. So if you look at the fact that millennials want to have multiple developmental opportunities, how do we get to that and how do we get, you know, where we don't have to deal with the visa? And we um, developed a four-week mobility program and we beta tested it in London, Paris, and New York and we moved 20 high-performing, highly skilled, and that was a pretty important criteria, um, not necessarily high potential, but you could be a highly skilled digital person that has knowledge they can go share by immersing in another uh, agency in another country. 
and we moved them around the network for four weeks. They were matched with a coach, and um, you know they had this four weeks in one place, or just like one place. Okay. Yeah, so like one from Paris went okay. to London, one from London went to New York, that kind of thing. Oh. Um, interestingly enough, we had them blog. We partnered with Medium.com. And so that opened up the experience to the rest of the world. So it, it made the network smaller. These people had these amazing developmental experiences, in some cases life-changing. We had people who had never been out of their country before. And they went and they got to experience another agency, another culture, took back tools and processes. Um, it was great for all the agencies that hosted them because they had mm -hmm. some other you know, folks in there. And what it was was we really had to kind of turn the classic, you know, Mobility means you've got to move somebody permanently and look at ways to do it you know, more flexibly, especially in, the, in this world. Yeah. Adam, was there any topic that came up in, in the breakout that uh, we should have covered in the agenda? Hmm. I think, in general, this stuff is woven through everything that we're talking about, right? Okay. Solving for complexity, understanding technology, staying ahead. Um, we've talked about training on all sides of the fence. We've talked about talent um, sourcing as well as retention on, on all sides. Um, it's not, you know, uh, someone said uh, programmatic can mean problematic in many cases because it can be so overwhelming, it can be so unique, it can be so foreign for a lot of people. And I think much of what we're talking about today uh, and, and over the co course of the conference covers um, all the different aspects of it and how it affects not just people that are doing real-time bidding, not just people that are working at a trading desk, but people that play any function in an agency. And it's going to impact how you measure. It's going to impact your creative opportunities. Uh, it's going to impact uh, in the ideas that you bring to clients and the role that it can play. It's not just for acquisition and performance media anymore. Um, you know, in particular, across a full service agency, you have to consider all the different ways that it's going to you know, create new avenues, new career path, uh, new opportunities, and even new clients. Okay, cool. Well, Adam, Patty, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.